Hello, you are welcome to this lesson. In this video, you are going to learn how to calculate for a resultant force using the force triangle approach. And before we do this, you must have knowledge about the sine rule and then the cosine rule. So let's look at what these two rules are. So let's say I have this triangle here, okay, which has sides A, B, and C, and then the angles opposite to these various sides are given in this triangle here. So you have the angle capital A to be the angle opposite to side A, and then angle capital B being the angle opposite to side B, and then angle capital C being the angle opposite to side C here. So if you want to find any of the sides or the angles of this triangle, we can use the sine rule or the cosine rule. So let's look at what these two rules is. We will first of all look at the sine rule. Okay. So for the sine rule, it says that if you want to find for any of the sides or the angles of this triangle, then you can use the formula side A over sine of angle capital A equals side B over sine of angle capital B equals side C over sine of angle capital C. You can use this formula here to calculate for any of the angles or the sides of this triangle here. And one thing about the sign rule is that you don't need all these three terms to calculate for the unknowns. Just two of these terms will be okay for you to calculate for the unknown side or the unknown angle. If you don't want to use the sign rule also, then we can use the cosine rule. So for the cosine rule, it says that if I want to calculate for side A, then I can use the formula A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of the angle capital A. Similarly, if I want to calculate for side B, then I can use the formula B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC multiplying cosine of the angle capital B. And then also if I want to calculate for side C, then I can use the formula C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of angle capital C. So these are the two rules we can apply to calculate for the unknown sides or angles of this triangle here. One thing about the sign rule is that if you want to calculate for a side, then we can use this formula here where you have the sides as the numerator and then the sign of the angles as the denominator. And if you want to calculate for an angle, then we can use the reverse form of the, the formula that we have here. Okay, where we have the sign of the angles as the numerator and then we have the sides as the denominator. So with this knowledge we have, let's go ahead and take an example. So I have the first example here, which is that we should calculate the resultant force in the figure below. So in this figure here, we have two forces here, which is F1 and F2, and then they, look, they both have their magnitudes. F1 has a magnitude of 200 Newton, and then F2 has a magnitude of 150 Newton. And then they all make a certain angle to this horizontal line here. So F1 makes an angle of 23 degrees and then F2 makes an angle of 68 degrees. So let's look at how you are going to apply the force triangle approach to calculate for the resultant force. Since we are applying the force triangle approach, we must redraw this figure here into a triangle. So that's what I have here on the right hand side. So I've drawn a triangle here using these two forces here and then their resultant force. So I have F1 here and then I have F2 here. And then this is the angle that F1 makes with the horizontal line, which is 23 degrees. And then F2 also makes an angle of what, 68 degrees with the horizontal line. So that's what I have here. And then this is the resultant of these two forces here. So when you look at this figure here, okay, when you look at this side here, you see that I have 112 degrees and then 123 degrees here. This 112 here was calculated by subtracting the 68 degrees we have here from 180 degrees because over here we will have an angle on a straight line okay and then we know the total of angle on a straight line is 180 so when i subtract 68 from 180 it will give me the remaining angle which is 112 degrees and over here too we will have an alternating angle here okay so if this angle here is 23 degrees we are going to have this angle here also to be 23 degrees so when i add the 23 degrees here and then the 112 degrees that give me the angle opposite to the resultant force r which is 
this 135 degrees so we know the r here to be the resultant of these two forces so all we have to do now is to calculate for the value of all this r and then its corresponding angle that it makes with the horizontal line here so let's go ahead and then do this to calculate for the resultant force i'm going to apply the cosine rule so let's look at how you are going to do this so we are applying the cosine rule here okay so we will have r squared because f1 squared plus f2 squared minus 2 f1 multiplying f2 and then also multiplying the cosine of 135 degrees which is the angle opposite to the resultant force so we will go ahead and then substitute in the values given okay so you have f1 to be 200 newtons and then you have f2 to be 150 newtons so that's what we have here so all you have to do is to simplify this equation here so adding 200 squared and then 150 squared will give me 62,500 which is the value i have here and then what you have here also two multiplying 200 times 150 cosine of 135 degrees will give me this negative value that i have in the bracket and since you have two negative values here you, you are going to have a plus sign here so you are going to add these two terms here and then that give me this value here so from here since you want to find r we will go ahead and then take the square root of the value that we got and then that will give us this 323.9 newtons here which is the value of the resultant force so now all you have to do next is to calculate for the corresponding angle that this resultant force makes with this horizontal line here as you can see all the two forces makes an angle with the, with the horizontal line so you must calculate the angle that the resultant force also makes with this horizontal line here so let's go ahead and look at how you are going to do this to do this you are going to apply the sine rule so let's look at how you are going to do this so i have this figure here okay where this theta here is the angle opposite to f2 okay and then of course you know that the angle opposite to the resultant force is 135 degrees which is as a result of the addition of the 23 degrees and then 112 degrees here so we are going to use these values to calculate for the unknown angle theta here so let's look at how we are going to do this so in calculating for the angle theta since we are calculating for the angle i wrote the the formula the other way around where we have the sign of the angles as the numerator and then we have the sides as the denominator so we are going to have sine theta over 150 equals sine of 135 over 323.9 okay so that's what you have here so you want to find for the value of what angle theta so i'm going to multiply the right hand side by 150 which will give me what you have here so we now go ahead and simplify it so when simplify what you have on the right hand side you will get this value here which is 0 0.3275 so we will then go ahead and then take the sine inverse of that value and then that will give us the angle to be 19.1 degrees so we will then add this angle here to the 23 degrees and then that will give us the angle that the resultant force makes with the horizontal so that's all for this lesson thank you very much for watching please make sure you like and subscribe